So you asked for it, right? I'm I'm setting up. I'm not even set up yet. What should I do? Yeah, and as I set up, I think and I talk. Oh my God! Yeah, I feel like, man, I I would give him a jacket. I was thinking, why does he not have a jacket on? Maybe he hates his jacket. I'm sure he has at least one. And that again, maybe he just doesn't like his jacket and he loathes it. And if I, I would, I was thinking about some nice little black jacket with like lots of fur, like similar to the H and M I used to have. I liked a lot. I liked that a lot. It was a male jacket, I think. And then again, I don't think it's a good jacket for me as a woman at all. All this dumb compromising. It's Mr. I am so poor. I'm setting up the table. I'm setting up the little blankie. I just put up, you know, getting the fluchi, my bookie. And what do you want me to talk about? All this noise. Oh, yeah. Setting up my table. Putting up the thing for the phone, which I'm not sure what you want me to do. Listening. No, I'm not talking about that. I don't want to filter my ambiance with horrible things. Thank you very much. Here you go. I'm putting it up. So, I know this is a super adventurous project, that, that piece. Because there's actually really no point for me to play this piece from you know the one we're playing with today unless of course i play it perfect and i play it fast and perfect only means to stay in the key signature and that's not such of a big of a deal and i'm not really sure at all because since i said one thing and then i said another and i had so many different notes and you know not just because in a key signature there appears one sharp or one flat or two of them doesn't mean that it's actually a key signature Especially when you do like semitones, like you have C, C sharp and D, or is it C, D flat and D, and then we have also A, G flat and D, and what does it mean? <laughs> what does it even mean? That means anything. You don't know anything when that happens, what's going on there. Because it doesn't really indicate anything. And then I had one with an F sharp. So I said, well, that's easy. That's our first one. That's maybe G. Maybe that's what it is. And then I, 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 I played the scale up and down to get a feel for it. And I ended up in D always. But D has two sharps, right? No, then I sit back and then I thought about it. Like, remember I told you yesterday, or was it the, day, the night before yesterday, the night before Christmas? Thinking in my head now, I, I usually I would just look it up, but now I, I told you I wanted to learn the whole thing. So I cannot just look it up because that's my standard. My standard is to figure it out. So I, I got there real quick, but I can also not get there real quick. And then I'm still setting up. What does it mean is that um, I have to just start zero up, and that's a good thing. It's actually a good thing because it will stay there forever. So I start with C and then count five down, right? So the first is G, but I remember that now because I made that visual imagine, image in my head. And on the scale of fifths, on the scale of the, yeah, what is it again? The scale of fifths, the circle of fifths, to know how many sharps and Bs are there in each of these key signatures and which is the key signature I am playing with or I'm learning to play with or trying to figure out the score. I, I now know how to do it from the zero. It's really no big deal. I just didn't thought I needed it. I, I don't have to. But um, yeah, once I looked into that, so I do from C sharp. I'm sorry, from the C is up above. It's just the C. And we know that's only white notes. There's no, no half notes. When you look at the piano keyboard, so you go down. I go down at first on the right side. That's how I started. Maybe I changed that, but that's how it worked for me. Because that's um, the forward, moving forward, the fifth the perfect fifth upwards from c forward or upwards that's why i go on the right side not to the left side which would be backwards i like counterclockwise maybe that's a good way of saying it see now i found a new expression clockwise and counterclockwise now i have to comment on that other thing gerade ausfahren <laughs> well it's it's um it is mean you have to you have to drive and it tells you that you have to drive not left or right backwards but forward but it also has it tells you you have to continue driving so because if you just drive straight that means that you can also maybe be a 
a person who does the circus clown act, so you have little like inclination in your car or in your wherever when you drive. So that would be driving straight. Or maybe they say straight, you, you can't be gay. <laughs> That's a stupid joke, I know. <laughs> can't be gay. <laughs> no, a, a German is super precise and I like it because of that. And there's like, sometimes they have super long words and the only thing what these words do is they just tell you exactly what's going on. So there's no, no place for doubt, which is very convenient, I have to say. Anyhow, so I was thinking about the key signature. So from C, 5 down C, D, E, F, G is G. And that's only one. I have the F sharp I told you earlier. Maybe that's that. But it turned out it, has, it felt so much in D. And I'm not quite sure if it has to end up in C or in D. Because I think if I feel like the whole scale ends in D, it should be D. But D has two sharps. And now I look back in my head. No, I, I'm, I promise you, I don't look at any piece of paper. I have it on my phone, by the way, the circle of fifths. And since I'm recording, I cannot just look it up because the recording would actually stop. Uh, yeah, oh, it's my book here, but I, I can only check on my book, which is great. But let me think about it first. I don't, now I want to think about it first, but I already have it. Uh, D is just like after the G, but you can check G, A. I know I said it wrong. I don't know why. So it's G, A, I have to think because in German this is an H, but here's a B, then a C, and a D. Here we go, D. And where did we got the sharps from? Ah, oh, yeah, right. The sharps we got from the left side as a reference point. It's the first one, you know, in the, in the flat key signature on the left side, counterclockwise would be an F. And what happens the next, well, we don't know that unless, of course, we count backwards in the circle of fifths. I remember what it was, but we can also go on the right side all the way and figure it out, what comes after the F. And that's all the way down below. But this moment, I think we, oh, everyone has it in her head, on her head, when you actually focus on it. I mean, so you're not doubt about it, you cannot cut that. But we can do it again. So we do D and then D, E, F, G, R. And a is A. I have no visual memory from A. And I made very sure that in my circle of F's, um, which I wrote down, I wrote it exactly at, uh, what would it be, three o'clock? 45 degrees because on the opposite side I know there's the E B minor which I've been using a lot which is the other side which is um, how many degrees is that again <laughs> it's not even 45 it's 90 degrees right so the other one which would be what is it again nine o'clock okay now at four o'clock oh that's a good way of handling it thank you very much although it doesn't work completely but it, at four o'clock we have a major I remember that now but we can check of course because we have G D then we have E E, F, G, A, B, wait, B, we don't have A, B, F, B, so wait, I have to think about this then. G, G, E, F, H, let's do English, C, D, E, F, G, G, A, B, C, D, D, E, F, G, A, C, A, okay, A is at four o'clock, I remember that now too, there's four, howdy, never thought about it this way. At four o'clock, we got four sharps, and at eight o'clock, we got eight <laughs> B flat. Mm. Mm. Can never be alone, B flat. <laughs> so at nine o'clock, we have three B flat. We have no, mm. no. <laughs> but we got a ten, maybe. <laughs> at ten, we got C. See, but I haven't gotten there yet. I just put it out of my memory. But we can also go back. Let's say let's, from C to F. Z, let's go. We go over. What a great way of explaining it. So I told you E is on nine o'clock. No, since it's counterclockwise, let's go back. So it's wait, how do I go back? <laughs> wait, e, F, E, F. Oh, it's the same, right? <laughs> from E to I. E, F, G, A, H, E, F, G. Oops, that's four. Okay, but you know it's a counter, it's four, it has to be. And that's how we do it. Now let's get my bookie. And then bookie, I wrote it down, which is good to know. So you can fall onto something. So it's B, it's not C. So I counted well. <laughs> so just count back. Yeah, you go back. If you know at three, if you know nine o'clock, you've got E, and you forgot about your, your ten o'clock, you just count from you know count backwards from nine to ten. I think that was probably Joe telling me right now in the field. And no, it's not. It kind of didn't came out of my my idea. 
like it very much. Anyhow, so if I will, I was thinking about what is it maybe in G because I have an F sharp. I also took the moment of writing all the scales down on my bookie just for having the practice of doing such a thing because that's what any studio and exam tells you to do, right? When you have examination, they tell you go count, go make it, go do your homework. I hate homework, by the way. I don't think anybody should have homework. There's not enough time at school. Man, what a slaver for poor students. And that's, uh, yeah, it's more things. I'm going to write about that. It's like, I, I feel I have to throw up on student loans. What the fuck? I come from Germany. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe like 10 cents a year, right? It's totally outrageous. So what about D major? We got here uh, C sharp, but I don't have C sharp. Wait, actually we did play with C, but I don't know. I use a lot of C and D, no C sharp there. So it couldn't be D major. Maybe it's in sub all and just C major. I don't even know if it changes. So I'm gonna change my car somewhere now because I wanna have a little bit of shade. No, I left the kitty food drying because it gets so humid. She hates humid. It's like, oh, she's a princess kitty. She doesn't want such food humid. Well, who can blame her for that, right? If I leave it out there for drying, usually I want to do it in charging day. Then it dries and she likes it again. So it's completely useless to do that piece unless, of course, I have the background music and I cannot have the background music on if I don't play the piece quick and fast, meaning on tempo or at tempo. That would make no sense at all whatsoever. So I had been writing down the score in sections because it was just too hard to get there and because, as I said, it's not just one melody. There's melodies and then there's other things like themes and movements and motives and however you call that jazz. Repeat it or not, so I probably overbrowed. <laughs> I should start over again fresh and make it all clear. But I have an indication now to start working with it. And like I said yesterday, I, I bubbled it a little bit with my flute and that felt already I can I can almost improvise over it. And that's so cool. But um, I'm really not sure if I can show you anything of this. Since how am I going to do that? Listen to the music and play the flute and have some other device recording it. Oh yeah, I saw this keyboard on, on, I saw this keyboard. Not that I need 88 keys, but I was so enticed. I felt so good just thinking about buying a keyboard, but also cheap, but I don't trust that website. I don't trust and give my number to anybody. And I thought, oh, cool, maybe I can start playing, I mean, practicing, I mean, actually learning really, really good the piano. I would not mind at all. I would not mind at all. And if you want to do that piano thing, and actually, I, I mean, even if you do classical, you don't need 88 keys or 96 keys. You, you really don't. I don't think so. It takes quite a while to get even to, you know, to more than the two or let's say three octaves in your hands. A little bit on the left and then a little bit on the right. Well, okay, maybe not that little, but in order to get there, I think usually people have to practice at least like two years, two and a half to three years, to even need more than just a small keyboard. So what fits on my desk, for example, in or in any car, which I don't know, which is like as long as the flute and a little bit longer and the hand more, but even the size of my flute a little bit, that would be enough keyboard for starting learning the piano, the C flute. And I, I can maybe take the phone and measure it, but, um, like the size of my window, the the, the width of a, of a car window, you don't need more, really. I mean, going up and down, unless you want to do boogie woogie, which is like nothing, and just play around. But what's the point? If you don't have a party, why would you even do that? Like boogie boogie, and trrr, but you play like all the keys, but only for a moment. No, you don't. See, what you need to have a little stress and piano to to have your body recognizing the 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 melodies and the bass, the key, the, the el basso stenato. Do you have, your body has to capture what the key signatures are, the songs you learn, and on the left side, the the bass, which is, sometimes it starts only with octave back and forth, ding, dong, ding, dong, as the bass for the melody. So what, but in piano, you can't really think about it because you, not like in flute, right? I can still think about it, although I should not. That's why I prefer to just play with no score, written music just by ear, because that's what ends come down to. You can't do that in the piano because, of course, you have more than one melody and you have many fingers and you play with two hands. 
That means uh, you can't really memorize it in, in your brain. You have to memorize it in your body. And that means you have to pay very close attention in the beginning, do very slowly and slowly, slowly, slowly go a tiny bit longer and have enough time, hours in the day to practice it. So it becomes your memory. That's why pianists, they don't look at scores when they play piano. I mean, they may look at scores, but they don't may, they don't look at scores to grab. No one, no musician looks at any score to read the notes. The only thing we ever do when we do a lot in performance, which of course never is soloist, never is a singer, never can't do that is only to remember when you have an orchestra maybe the entrance like when other instruments play you can follow the score when they are you can get your turn or also annotations sometimes when you have lots and lots of pieces in short amount of time like the choir we had plenty of pieces in a very short amount of time would present that into a audience of you know hundreds of people to know the annotations um, of the director or maybe just to know that you can relax as you perform because there's nothing you need to be worried about because if there's anything you had doubt about it's right there on the score something like that which brings me to the topic I have to say I don't really want to that okay so we had like 60 people in the choir I was 15 and but I was like an exception because no one was there were no children allowed there was just teachers and maybe students from university, but mainly there were professional people. And we were singing after a good amount of practice and re- practice and rehearsal. Really good, excellent quality, I have to say, the director. Absolute respect, yes. Absolute respect, total respect, every single one. And there were modern pieces and old pieces. So when we went to these halls, which are like three of the, the largest concert halls in Hamburg, um, there are lots of audience. I mean, it was always packed, always to the extent we had to actually uh, add more days. I'm not saying that we were great, but of course we were also lots of musicians, so each had like a lot of people they knew. But the word came around and someone else wanted to do it. But the point I have to make right now is that I am like, okay, so there's the, like, and when you have an, okay, so when you have a football team and then there is like the right hand from the football team, like the, the star. Or when you have like an orchestra, you see they always like go in and then they salute one person. You think, what the, is that racism? <laughs> what the fuck? Why is always this is the director and someone else gets the attention? What the fuck? So it's, it's the first violin and she has earned her respect, or he, of being the first violin. So, so one of those guys was in the choir to one of those who actually could, you know, when we split the choir in rehearsals to have, you know, two rehearsals parallel going on, someone else had to give the practice of the rehearsal which was not the director so it was split into him and someone else who was equally prepared to do such a thing so there it is so in the concerts the director directed and of course his other his great other director his mirror was actually having the score in his hand like everybody else but he had his hand his score up so he could look over the score and look actually at the director as it should be because it's respectful and when you sing you have to have a good body position because that's where the air fits in you you have you can control it so that means that your pitch is all right and if the director comes up with anything you need to see what he comes up with and he's going to guide you through the dynamics which has to be uniform everyone has to do the same so that's how it should be so nobody would look over their score they would all be looking at the score like at this at the level of their belly button down ashamed in a concert not seeing what the director was doing absolutely unprofessional and the only person who looked up was the director's mirror and I and I know because someone told me so what the heck what what is wrong with the world <laughs>